Hey everybody, it's Chad with Nobody Else's Auto. We're standing here with Mike Shook at his shop, Auto Artistry in Russell, Kansas. And we're gonna check out the 40 Ford cab over pickup that Mike just got done putting together for us. The truck is far from done. We're gonna take it back and go through the chassis suspension, get the driveline stuff put in it. But Mike took care of the hard stuff that I don't have the talent to do, which is making all this fit on a chassis that is going to be drivable and taking a cab and a bed that weren't originally together and making it all work and making it look right. So that's the tricky part. That's why he's called auto artistry because that's kind of, there's a lot of art into making this stuff work. So here's what we've got our 40 Ford cab over that we brought over to Mike with this bed. And we wanted to put it on a newer chassis so that it was drivable. So we've got an 01 Dodge Dakota frame that we brought him to work with. And we now have an intact rolling unit that we can work with now. So, as you can tell, we've got them mounted up. You can see it's still got Dakota wheels on it because it's on the Dakota chassis. If we take a look inside. Okay, we've got the steering and brakes in there. And you built all the column bracketry, obviously, Mike. Yeah, that's a Flaming River column, stubby column. And then we did the, the billet, billet joints and, and uh, got it to match up with the Dodge Dakota rack and pinion. So, yeah, hand fabricated. And you've got the brake pedal assembly in it. You had to modify the transmission tunnel to go over the LS, obviously. But not, or not dramatically. There's some not, modification. Not much, but it, we had about an inch issue there, so it'll be a little interesting putting a gas pedal in it. But other than that, I think it's good to go. Because we don't have a lot of inches to spare no, on there's, these. there's no room in this truck. So. <laughs> no. Walk around the front and look at the, we've got the, the iconic oval grill of these 38 to 40 Ford trucks. And you've got this all set up for the LS under here. Maybe. You're too good a job. You got the stick too good. All right. Pull that latch. 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 Pull Pretty tight. So we've got it set up. This is just a mock-up motor. This is not the motor we're going to use. Uh, but obviously we had to get something that Mike could sit in there, get mounts set for the motor, the tranny, make sure it was going to clear the steering rack and clear all the front suspension. And uh, like he said, he's got U-joints for the, from the, the shorty steering column straight down to the, to the original rack and pinion. So we'll have rack and pinion power steering on this thing. And uh, it, like he said, it's a little tight, but really it's not that bad. I mean, it could be a lot worse. You can actually see around it. You well, can get to a yeah. lot of it. Well, we'll have to relocate the coil packs yet. You know, other than that, it fit in there pretty good. And you can even still get to the dipsticks. Yep. Bobby Smith was asking, would using a Vans chassis work any better for a COE? No. Dodge Dakota chassis, I don't know, and I'm not a Dodge guy, but they just seem to be the way to go, and they're... They're, they're heavy duty and, and for a light truck, they work good. So, so unless they wanted to use a one-ton chassis or something, yeah, there'd be no point. And if they're going to make no a need. pickup type chassis, use the Dakota frame. It just everything, everything just, and it doesn't matter whether it's Ford or what you're planting on the Dakota. I mean, I've done a Dodge on the Dakota years ago, and it was it was a straightforward, pretty easy setup to get everything to do what you want it to do. Let's go ahead and walk work our way around the other side. And kind of about the same thing. It'll fit together really well. We've got our spare tire mount on this side yet. Yeah, so. we took the running boards Chad supplied, as you can see, and then we shortened them and then fit them from the, from the cab to the bed, which none of the running board or the bed were, were original to this, this cab. So, and it worked out pretty good. Yeah, it laid out really nice. Really pleased with that. Working our way all the way around the back, and this is what's cool using this bed. They've got the Ford tailgate to go with it. They even got the old tags that were on this the truck that the bed came off of. So obviously can't use them, but it sure looks cool. And even around the back, once again, we just talked about this on this Dakota frame. Our gas tank right here, we ordered a 5354 Chevy car gas tank, and it fit right into this frame really, really well. Obviously, you can see you had to do some notching and stuff for clearance for the filler neck and for the fuel pump and sending unit assembly. 
And sometimes that's just luck of the draw when we figure out what we're gonna do for a fuel tank. But this thing, it's like it was made to fit in there. So once again, another advantage of using this Dakota setup, there's just a lot of options that just kind of seem well, to work yeah, with where it. The, where the spare tire was underneath here, this works great. So of course, if you look at the bed, you can see we, have, we did a false floor. If you see the gaps up here, you can see where we, we double mounted. Chad will be able to take a piece of sheet metal and mount it mounted on here, a, a rusty old piece of sheet metal to match the rest of the truck and so we'll have blade or whatever, whatever you decide to do. Nice flat finished bed to finish it out. And, yep. and something else that while we're looking back here on these Dakotas, you know, one thing about these early 2000s Dakotas, they were set up with a V8. This thing has a heavy duty 12 bolt rear end under it. So, and it's basically, it's a smaller frame to work with, but it's basically a half ton pickup. It's, so it's, yeah. it's just as good as using something bigger, just easier to work with. And they like, like we discussed in another video, they're really easy to, to shorten and fit to what you want to do wheelbase wise. So that makes your life a lot easier trying to put the puzzle together. Well, that saves you some money too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I like on most of these builds, that's a, that's something a lot of people got to think about. If if it's going to save you some money on the other side, maybe you you know, get get something you know is going to work is going to save you a lot more on the other side of things. Well, so. and that's important. These things can get out of hand pretty easy. Oh yeah. Mark Smith wants to know what your Dakota frame works best for a COE. This is an 01, 02, something like that. Yeah, I think this was 01, if I remember right. And that's, that's the years we've been sticking with when we do a, a chassis swap. So that would have been basically the 97 to 03 body style or 97 to 04 body yeah, style. Somewhere in, somewhere in there, yeah. So that's what we're using on this one. And it, like I said, it worked out great. If it saves Mike time, it saves us money, and it's going to save you money down the road. So, yep. plus just the fact of making everything fit. I mean, that's you know when they when things click together, it just fits better, and the project works better. So, yep, that allows uh, you to free up money for later in the build when you get in trouble. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> there's no, there's no such thing as a cheap way to do something no, like this. It's still not inexpensive to do. And we're not going to paint this truck. You know, this is for my daughter Addie. She loves the look of this truck the way it is, so we're not even going to paint it. And uh, and they're still expensive builds. And obviously, you throw paint in it, it puts into a whole other a whole other atmosphere of what's got to be dealt with and what's got to be handled. Yep. So anyway, anything else you want to tell them about it, or that pretty much covers it for now. Okay, so you got your part to do. Yep. <laughs> Well, there it is, the 40 cab over pickup. It's mocked up. Now we're taking her back home. Addie and I will take it back apart and go through the chassis and suspension on it. And uh, we'll go, I think we're going to take it to Colorado to our buddy Eddie Wilson, who's going to help us uh, with the LS setup. He said he builds his own computers and his own harnesses. So he's going to help us with the drivetrain setup on this thing and, and make it go. But uh, Ken be happier with the way it, put, it came together. You know, Mike and his crew at Auto Artistry here do an outstanding job. You know, if you need anything done, give them a shout. If he can squeeze you in, you're backing up pretty bad now. But we, we keep busy. As you can tell, there's a fastback Mustang right there, a uh, Cougar up there, first gen Camaro on that rack. So they're kind of stacked up. We've got the 62 Galaxy coming in Monday. So it's the 60s are in here. The, the 62 Galaxy, that's kind of a neat car. Was it, was it a 406? Or a... It was a tri-power setup. I don't remember all the details on it. Okay. So. But it's a 3 do 62 Galaxy, yeah. and it, what's it going to be? Is it a full build, or...? Yeah, he's, the guy has started on it a little bit, and, and I think he's had it in some other shops and decided that uh, this was the place to come, so here we are. Well, and that's something else. If anybody's thinking about building something, Take it to somebody like Mike. If Mike can't get you in, get somebody that works on this stuff, is dedicated to it, and knows it if you want to get it done. You take it to a typical body shop, a lot of times they don't have time to schedule them in. You take it to somebody like Mike where this is what they focus on, and that's what they're trained to do, and they can manage the projects and handle the projects and work with you to accomplish what your goal is. So just because... It may seem like it's a little higher taken to somebody like this. It saves you money in the long run versus people who you pay for a lot of time when that isn't productive time. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Yeah. So, so you know, if you want, you know, if you take it to somebody who's not in this business and knows what they're doing, you're the one that's going to be paying the bill for the practice and the trials versus somebody who knows how to do it when they go in. So, 
Super excited about this project. Can't thank Mike enough for what he's done here. If you need something, look him up on Facebook under Auto Artistry uh, or AutoArtistry.com on his regular web page, on his website. You can look at all the cool projects he's done over the years, and they crank out some really cool stuff. So couldn't be happier the way this come out. Thanks, Mike. We appreciate the work you did for us. And uh, can't wait to keep rolling on it and get her going. So thanks for being here. Thanks for checking out the cab over with us. Got any questions, you can always give me a shout. My number's on the page. You got a project you need built, give Mike a call at Auto Artistry. We'll see if they can help you out. Thanks for stopping in with us on Sunday morning and checking out our cab over project. And we will see you soon.